So we have a wheel that is rotating freely at an angular speed of 800 revolutions per minute. Um, a shaft whose rotational inertia is negligible. The second wheel initially at rest with uh, twice the rotational inertia of the first is suddenly coupled to the shaft. So again, we um, we have um, you know two two discs, much like in this problem, and then our shaft here, and then all one is at rest, and then all of a sudden we basically clamp this to the shaft, so um, things suddenly change. And so we're told that the that the second disc has um, a rotational inertia of twice the first, and the second disc um, has a angular um, initially an angular velocity of zero. So let's see here. Now we have we know that the angular momentum is conserved. So L, the initial angular momentum equals L prime, the final angular momentum. The initial angular momentum is this, but obviously this one is zero because the initial the one disk is not initially rotating. And so the final angular momentum, when they're, they're all coupled together, they all have the same rotational inertia, the rotational velocity. So then, obviously this term, the uh, you know j omega prime plus two j omega prime, we get this. And so we can solve for omega prime, and we just get um, it is omega one, the angular momentum. Uh, the angular velocity initially of the one disk um, over three and again because you know going from um, um, I should actually yeah, I should actually I should call this F so in going from angular from RPM to radians per second um, there's just the factor so that factor um, is uh, cancels out in this expression here so we can say that f prime equals one third of f which means f prime is 267 rpm um, now you know changing it to um, radians per second we just get this factor again that i said cancels out going from here to here of 2 pi over 60 and so that's um winds up being the angular velocity in radians per second is 27.8 radians per second and whenever you're going from RPM to radians per second, a good kind of uh, just first guess is that th this thing here is roughly um, one tenth, right? So two pi over 60 is, is roughly one tenth. Um, so you could expect that, you know, basically one tenth is uh, a factor of one tenth as you go from RPM to radians per second. So they ask us then, um, what is a fraction of the original kinetic, rotational kinetic energy is lost? Well, we can figure out the initial kinetic energy, the final kinetic energy. So this is the change. So the fra the percent change, or the um, yeah the fractional change. So the initial minus the final all over the initial. Plugging everything in, and uh, lots of stuff cancels out here. Okay. Um, and we also use this expression here. And so we wind up with, this just winds up being two-thirds. So we have two-thirds of the kinetic energy as we did to start. So how much was lost? Well, that means one-third of it was lost. Um, so we have the kinetic energy that's lost, um, or the, the, the um, fraction of kinetic energy lost, and I should put this over T, um, is one-third. Right? So we lost a third of our kinetic energy in, um, when we coupled the second disk to the first.